Hi everyone, this is another interview on Vegan with Jen, and today's guest is my friend Dr. Anne Nguyen Chung. Dr. Anne is a dentist with a passion for contributing toward the health and wellness of others. Her hope is to inspire many to achieve optimum overall health, which includes physical, mental, and spiritual, ultimately to help maximize a more purposeful and fulfilling life. And she's been vegan now for around three years. And today we are so grateful to her for sharing her personal vegan journey and how she was able to reverse multiple chronic diseases in her own life by changing her diet. And we'll be ending with a discussion on diet and dental health. So welcome, Dr. Anne. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for having me on the channel. Of course. So let's jump right in. So to give us a background, can you describe the diet you were consuming before going plant-based? Absolutely. Gosh, um, my diet was very poor. I ate a lot of processed breads, cereals, crackers. Cheese was my staple. Mm -hmm. During my, um, my dental schooling as well as my master's program i just basically ate what whatever was convenient and quick and so oftentimes that meant going through the drive through getting chicken tacos so very poor um in terms of vegetables i fruits and vegetables i rarely ate them i would say if i had vegetables it just came with my dish or it was a very small percentage of my actual meal um, I said again, um, dairy and cheese <laughs> were my staple. I ate that a lot. It was my favorite. So, yep. <laughs> yeah. And so what did your health look like when you were on that diet? Um, you know, I had, um, I would say eczema, severe plaque psoriasis, irritable bowel syndrome, um, I would say the eczema I started noticing in my early 20s. Um, the psoriasis also in my 20s, and it became really bad towards my the end of my 20s. Um, in terms of um, irritable bowel syndrome, I noticed that in my late teens, and it just became worse and worse. I never really thought about diet as being you know, the contributing factors, because I knew that I had family members who also struggled with this. And so I figured, oh gosh, it's just genetics. Um, right. The, right. So in terms of the, the, hyper, the hypertension, um, high cholesterol and prediabetes, I actually didn't know that until about four or five years ago when I was diagnosed with these. I know that both my parents had history of high cholesterol and right now they're on statins my dad's side has history of diabetes and so i figured well i'm young now i'll worry about it later on um so yeah lots of different things i also had other inflammatory diseases which you know i realized you know it, it was due to diet right yeah i'm i'm so glad you're mentioning you thought it was genetics because mm -hmm. your family had it and you had no idea it was possibly your diet that could be contributing to this. And mm -hmm. I think um, a lot of people probably still think that, um, especially with things like heart disease and diabetes that mm -hmm. runs in so many families. Yes. Um, but I'm sure all of that must have been difficult to deal with. Um, and I know there are a lot of people listening who are struggling with those same things now. Um, so I'm glad you're here talking about it and how mm -hmm. you were able to turn this around. So when did you transition to a whole food plant-based diet? And maybe you could share what prompted you to make that change? Absolutely. Well, I like that you, you piggybacked on the genetics thing. I definitely don't want to discredit genetics because right. my liver for some reason, genetically, it does produce more cholesterol, but, um, but I'll go into that a little bit later. Um, so how I became plant-based was about four or five years ago when I decided to take the time to address my own health. 
you know, it had been contributing towards patients, well, you know, welfare, wellness, but then I noticed my health was definitely deteriorating. My gut health was just becoming to the point where I thought I had colon cancer. I was bleeding. I had constipation, mm -hmm. diarrhea, and I'm like, oh, I better get this checked. And so the good news is I found out that I didn't have colon cancer, mm -hmm. uh, but um, it was just clogged up gut health. And, mm -hmm. and it was when I had my blood labs done and that was when I found out I did have prediabetes. I did have hyperlipidemia, high cholesterol, um, mm -hmm. hypertension, stage one, which I was surprised. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm young. And my blood pressure was kind of running at about 130. Um, systolic and diastolic was about 80, sometimes 85, up to 85. And that's definitely stage one. And I, I was like, oh, man, I... So I spoke with my primary care provider and oh. thankfully she is plant-based and she recommended, Hey, Anne, you might want to consider going on a plant-based vegan diet. And so because I had been eating so poorly up into that point, I figured, okay, well, I, you know what, I'm going to eat cleaner, which still included meat. You know, I, the American center diet, recommends this. And so I was still eating what I considered was clean meats, lean chicken. Mm -hmm. I was eating cheese still. And so I did this and I took my blood test three months later. It, it wasn't really changing. And I, I was like, you know what, I'm going to continue this diet. Maybe I'm going to incorporate more vegetables and fruits. Mm -hmm. And, and over the course of about a year taking my labs, um, a few times it it was not going down enough and this was just so frustrating and so I told my, my medical provider I'm like what the heck I don't know I, I I'm eating better I don't understand what's going on and so she said you know what and um, like I said before I recommend that you go completely plant-based vegan Mm -hmm. or you're going to eventually have to go on medications to control your cholesterol. So, um, and, and the, the diabetes thing. So, so that was when I started my journey and, and Jennifer, I know I met you back in 2016. That was my first plantrician project where um, the, the conference where they mm -hmm. had a panel of physicians and healthcare practitioners who talked about different studies that prove that going on this plant-based diet can successfully not only prevent these chronic diseases, but also reverse them. And I was very encouraged. And so at that time I had started, um, you know, going plant-based and have noticed um, significant changes. Yeah. So, that's, that's fantastic yeah. too, that, um, that your doctor told you about this because yeah. usually it's the opposite and right, right. the person finds veganism on their own and their doctor's like, Oh, I don't know about that. Um, so that's really cool. Um, okay. So many people usually have difficulty in that transition stage, mm -hmm. um, when they're first starting to realize like, I want to eat healthier. Um, mm -hmm. so I always like to ask more about how you transitioned once you decided that you want to do the whole food plant-based diet, um, you know, did you do it gradually, um, taking away the animal products or all at once? What worked for you? No, that's a great question. I would say my process was definitely gradual. Mm -hmm. um, so once I did commit to the plant-based diet, mm -hmm. I still was incorporating a lot of oils in my cooking, mm -hmm. um, vegan butter, because cheese prior to being on this diet was definitely my trigger. I love cheese. And so I was trying to find foods that reminded me of that. And um, actually, you know, three months after going on this, what I thought was doing plant-based correctly, um, while still putting a lot of oils and, and butters in my food, my my cholesterol level did not significantly change. And so what I learned was that um, I had to also eliminate a lot of the oils. You, we don't need that much. And so I learned different cooking styles. Um, so I would say 
I probably became more vegetarian. You know, Mm -hmm. I went from being omnivore to vegetarian to the whole food plant-based. And so later on, when I talk about the plant-based diet, I'm talking about the whole food because a lot of vegan foods, um, as I learned, can be highly processed and full of sugars and salts. And that doesn't necessarily help with, you know, when you have the building blocks of oils, it can still um, be the building blocks for cholesterol, which Mm -hmm. my liver unfortunately does um, make a lot. So when you eliminate that, I noticed it was a lot better. Right. And I I noticed it's it's really not just about removing animal products from our diets, but also adding in the healthy plant-based foods. So if someone's on a diet and um, like a standard American diet where they're not eating a lot of fruits and vegetables, if right. you just remove the meat, um, that's only one step, right? We still have to add back in fruits and vegetables and whole grains instead of you know vegan butters and mm-hmm. vegan ice cream, things like that. Right. Um, so when you were transitioning... Um, Where did you find your recipes? Did you take what you already eat and kind of veganize it or how did that work? Yeah, no, that's a great question. One of my best friends gave me a vegan cookbook. And so I started there and, um, but I noticed that this cookbook didn't have a lot of pictures and I'm, (laughs) I'm inspired by lots of pictures. So I'm very grateful for all my Instagram friends who put up amazing photos because I would say I definitely take my inspiration from um, social media, from the internet, and I use whatever is at home and I I make it my own. And like you said, you know, some things that I already, my favorite dishes, um, Asian cuisine, I just substitute the the meat protein with uh, tofu or lentils or, you know, something else that is plant-based. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So after going vegan, you mm-hmm. experienced numerous health benefits. And when I say vegan, I mean the whole food, yes. plant-based diet. <laughs> yes. And you avoided these medications. Can you share with us, you know, just exactly how your health changed after you adopted this whole food, plant-based diet? Yeah, absolutely. I would say about a month after really eating, like you said, the whole food, plant-based diet, my bloating um, initially was bad because of the, the fiber intake I was eating, but then about a month, everything was regular. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing because you're talking to a person who had such severe irritable bowel syndrome where sometimes it was just so painful that I couldn't stand because of the bloating. Mm-hmm. Um, so super regular, amazing. Um, I would say the eczema took a little bit longer. I I didn't notice it until maybe nearly a year after. Mm -hmm. Um, I had just itchiness on my extremities, um, my face, my my body, and that took a little bit longer. I'm sure with Mm -hmm. people, everyone, it's it's different. The plaque psoriasis has significantly gotten better. I wouldn't say it's gone away yet. I know it's an autoimmune thing and it could be other factors contributing to that stress is one. And, and, you know, I, that's, that's another topic, but, (laughs) but I definitely have noticed a huge significance, um, in, in the psoriasis decreasing in, in, in size as well as severity. Now, in terms of my labs, my blood pressure completely normal. I would say before it was about 130 over 80, sometimes 85. Now um, it's like 110 or lower for systolic and, and diastolic is, is 67 or under. So huge changes there. Um, my cl- overall cholesterol did decrease by 50 points. Um, it is still towards the higher range of the normal. But overall, I mean, what we're looking for is a decrease in LDL, which is the bad cholesterol, an increase in the HDL, and overall the triglycerides went down. Um, And then my, um, I'm no more, no more pre-diabetic. So all that is is normal now. So more energy too. (laughs) That's so awesome. And so the irritable bowel syndrome, that took how long? Um, I, you know, I knew, like I said, um, once going on the, whole, the, the truly whole base plant 
based diet, mm-hmm. I would say it took me a month. Wow. Yeah, and, it was was something, so and that was something you had from your teens, you said. Yes. So yes. That's, that's just incredible to me yes. that people might have these conditions for years and years. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after going plant-based, you know, a month, you know, yes. or even if it took a year for something to resolve, if you had that for 10 years, I mean, that's, yeah. that seems incredible to me that our bodies can just naturally, you know, um, resolve these issues on their own just by changing the diet after having yes. them for so long. Yeah. Amazing. Um, so that's crazy. And I also have the photos um, that you shared with me oh, yes. um, to share with everyone. So I'm just going to pull this up really quick. Um, and feel free to comment on your experience with this. I've found that um, a lot of people find it easy um, to lose weight without even trying it. Just even if you're not doing it to lose weight, it tends to be like a, a side effect. Yeah, no, thanks for the reminder. Um, I know prior to this conversation, I had talked about weight loss as a natural side effect. I wasn't even trying to lose weight. Um, but the first picture you see is a picture from um, 2009, I believe. Yeah, summer of 2009. And then this picture was from this summer. So I definitely lost a lot of weight, which, you know, I just feel better overall, just more energy. And I think, you know, I don't know, just being able to eliminate all the toxins from all the years in my intestines, I think that was just really amazing. So thank you for yeah. bringing that up. Of course. Um, thank you so much for sharing it with us. Um, yeah, I think it's nice when we're on this whole food plant-based diet. Um, you can eat until you're full, until you feel satisfied when you're eating these foods in their natural states. And then you have all of these benefits. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, let's talk a little bit more um, about your diet. I want to get into the specifics of like, what kind of foods do you eat? Absolutely. Um, I would say my staple um, has been rice and beans because both my husband and I have pretty busy schedules. We work pretty long hours and get home late. So we pre-make rice and beans and we'll always have, um, you know, a bunch of greens, whether it be cabbage, mixed greens. Um, We also like to roast vegetables um, in our air fryer, which is super fast to do. The Instant Pot has been a great meal prep um, kitchen appliance for us. Mm -hmm. Um, I do eat a lot of cauliflower, broccoli, um, just, yeah, anything you can roast in the oven. Mm -hmm. I try to eliminate oils as much as possible. Sometimes it's hard to do, but, um, I mean, it's been a lot less than before. Um, I use a lot of spices Mm -hmm. because I want to, you know, minimize the salt intake. So, um, yeah, anything just intact. I do right now because it's winter, I have been making a lot of vegetable soups in Mm -hmm. my instant pot, um, just various vegetables, kale, um, lentils, beans. Yeah. Mm, All of that sounds good. Um, what about for breakfast? Okay. So breakfast, I, I mean, it's basically the same every day. Um, my husband and I have oatmeal, we have Mm -hmm. blueberries, walnuts with it, sometimes a little bit of almond butter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, And what about, um, snacks? Do you snack throughout the day? Um, I'll not really. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, Sometimes I'll have like maybe nuts on the side just to, you know, if my stomach's crawling and my patient's mm-hmm. here. Oh no, I better <laughs> eat something so it doesn't bother my patient. But yeah, I, I, not too much, not too many okay. snacks. Yeah, well, the food on your Instagram looks so good. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Every time I look at it, I'm like, oh, you should post the recipes so we can <laughs> make it. <laughs> Um, and before we move on to the last topic, I'm wondering if your like family and friends are plant-based, um, or if you could share some tips on maybe eating out or having get-togethers with family and friends. 
Um, yes. So in the beginning, this was pretty tough mm -hmm. because my family members didn't really understand what I was trying to do. They said, oh, you know, you should, you can eat this. And, and, you know, in our culture, it's considered for some, for some of my family members, if I don't eat it, it's disrespectful. Um, but thankfully, I, you know, I would gently tell them, hey, you know, it's for my health reasons. And, and thankfully, they were really understanding. Um, I will say, I will just kind of eat it out of respect in mm -hmm. the beginning. Um, but now most of my family and friends know that I am more plant based. And so they have been making dishes um, and substituting the meat with tofu. Um, and I'll also offer to bring a dish of my own, like a mm -hmm. salad or a, a vegan dish. And so it hasn't been too bad in terms of going to restaurants, which hasn't been an issue lately because of the pandemic right. and <laughs> lockdown. But um, that's easy. I would just order something vegan on the, on the menu. And then in terms of um, get-togethers at uh, friends' houses, maybe they might not know. Um, like I said, I'll bring a dish. And um, sometimes, occasionally, I will have someone who plops a food on, <laughs> on my plate. I'll explain to them, hey, you know, I, I thank you so much. I'm, you know, trying to be as polite as possible. But, but um, you know, it's, it's, it's tough because on one end, um, relationships, I do – I, I, it's, it's, it's one of those things where, um, I, you just have to tell them in advance, you know, and sometimes if sometimes someone forgets, you know, I'll remind them. And if they insist, I will just eat it, you know, mm -hmm. you know, just respectful out of courtesy, respect. And if someone makes me maybe a birthday cake and it does have milk and eggs in it, you know, I, I won't decline it. You know, the key thing is, you know, if your diet mostly consists your lifestyle, if it consists of primarily plant-based whole foods, I think that that's awesome. So it's, it's a tough one, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I think the social aspect um, is a big barrier for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, I remember I was talking to someone once and they're like, Oh, I can't go vegan because you know, when I go to people's houses, I don't want to decline. And I said, you know, well, why don't you just go vegan except for when you're in that situation, you know, mm -hmm. um, instead of using these things as like reasons not to do it, yeah. um, if we just embrace it. And it turns out over time, usually people start to, you know, know you as, um, you know, the vegan or the whole food yeah. plant based. Um, yeah, but it is a big, it is a barrier when you don't want to disrespect somebody when right. they do something. Um, and I think the biggest thing is in the beginning before people, um, know that you're making this change, but mm -hmm. I like what you said about just being polite, um, letting them know you're doing it for your health and that, mm -hmm. you know, you don't mean any disrespect. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but thank you for that. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about your practice. So do you incorporate, um, plant-based nutrition into your dental practice? I absolutely do. Um, I, because, I mean, although I regret not knowing about the plant-based whole food diet sooner, because I've gone through this walk, I'm more convinced. And so I work at a clinic and most of my, unfortunately, the, for the demographics that I work with, we do see a high rate of obesity, um, mm -hmm. other morbid mor morbidities like diabetes, chronic health, heart diseases. Um, and there's definitely a correlation between that and mm -hmm. caries, um, debt to decay, as well as periodontal disease, which is the number, re number one reason for tooth loss. So when a patient comes in, um, for an exam, actually for exam or any dental procedure, we go over medical history as well as we take their blood pressure. And the reason why we take blood pressure is because most of our anesthetics have epinephrine in it and epinephrine can um, increase heart rate, which for people who are hypertensive, 
This can increase their risk of heart and stroke in the chair. And so when I notice an elevated blood pressure, um, and of course, blood pressure, that only tells you one thing. It could be lots of reasons. It could be dental anxiety. They're not looking forward to getting that injection. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, it's understandable, which is why it's important that I ask the right questions. Hey, um, if they've never been diagnosed with hypertension before, I, you know, I can, you, they'll, they'll usually admit, yeah, I'm nervous doctor. Or, you know, I ask them if they had caffeine right before the procedure or if they ran up a flight of stairs. And if the, those aren't um, the case, and I notice, hey, you know, you've never been diagnosed, or, or on the medical history, I also see if they write down um, a history of um, high cholesterol or diabetes. And so that's when I open up the conversation and say, mm -hmm. hey, Miss um, Susan, I noticed that you have this on your medical history, and you've never been maybe you've been diagnosed with hypertension or maybe not, but that's when I open up and I ask them about their lifestyle, their nutrition, and I educate them mm -hmm. right, right then. And um, so, so blood pressure is one aspect. Um, of course it definitely, you know, you, you want to be careful because of the anesthetics that we use also the medications that we prescribe some things mm -hmm. that um, might counteract badly with the medication that they're taking. So that's one area. Um, when we're doing the oral cancer screenings, um, I check for things such as acid erosion, um, plaque buildup, mm -hmm. and that is definitely directly related to diet. For patients who eat a diet high in simple carbohydrates, such as processed breads, crackers, I'll notice, um, you know, a high level of plaque, which contributes to dental cavities. Mm -hmm. And so, um, again, I'll educate them on, you know, plant-based versus um, eating these processed foods. It can ha increase your chances of getting cavities. Likewise, um, periodontal disease, like I said earlier, this is the number one reason for tooth loss. A lot of my patients say, hey, doctor, my parents lost their teeth at, at an early age. And so I think I'm going to too, because it's, it's genetic or I'll hear it's due to age. I'm going to lose my teeth anyway. Well, unfortunately that's actually, there is some truth to that. Maybe a small percentage that, that genetics can play um, a role in that, but it's really the bacteria and certain foods that we eat promote certain bacteria in our, in our mouth. And so as our, our, our gut, we have good bacteria, we have bad bacteria. And depending on the foods that we eat also promotes that. So um, there was actually a study, a couple studies I found that showed that um, the, the difference between the microbiome in one saliva, um, they, 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 they used vegans versus someone on, um, an omnivorous diet. And they found mm -hmm. that people who were vegans generally ate more dietary fiber and that fiber promotes a certain bacteria in the mouth. And, and in another mm. previous study showed that this bacteria, um, the, the fiber, there's a link between um, fiber and decreasing um, the rate of periodontal disease. And so it's just so fascinating. Wow. I know there's, there's a lot more research and I, I, I feel like there should be more. And I think that, you know, as we continue to get more awareness on this, um, people will realize not only does it affect the, the gut biome overall health, but you know, whatever we put in our mouth, that's just the start of, your overall wellness because what we ingest, everything's connected. The mic microbiome in the gut, the mouth, mm -hmm. it's cool. Um, so well, yeah. that is really cool yeah. because I hear all the time about how diet affects the gut microbiome. And, you know, I, I would love to see those studies that you're talking about um, with microbiome in the mouth. I think that's so cool. Yeah. Um, it's really crazy how diet can affect so many things. Um, yeah. I mean, just from our conversation, we're hearing the microbiome, diabetes, heart health, gut health, even skin conditions, um, and dental health. So diet is just so, so important in so many ways.
Absolutely. So we know that there's a pH scale that goes from zero to 14. Mm -hmm. Neutral is pH of seven. Our enamel, um, what I've seen a lot of acid erosion is, is, is sometimes due to diet, but it's all, you know, sometimes it's due to acid reflux and that sort of thing. But, but the pH level that dissolves enamel is 5.5. And when you eat processed foods, a lot of those processed foods, those sodas, um, dairy, they're acidic. Um, and in terms of um, plant-based, you know, when you drink the, the plant-based milks, they're neutral and sometimes they're even more alkalinic. Greens are alkalinic. Now, not, not saying that all plants are alkalinic because, you know, fruit juices mm -hmm. and that sort of thing that they can, that can cause asterosion too. But overall, like they've seen that people on a plant-based, what I've seen in my own patients, mm -hmm. I ask them, hey, are you plant-based? And I do have uh, a, a few patients who do that. And I've noticed a difference between the teeth wear. So anyway, so. Wow. No, that's so cool. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. Um, so this has been so wonderful talking with you. Um, thank you so much. And um, thank you everyone for watching. And please check out Dr. Ann Nguyen Chung on social media. Um, I will link it in the des uh, description box below. She has a YouTube um, and she also started a new business recently. Um, if you want to tell us briefly about that before we end. Sure. So really quickly, um, during the pandemic, I, it's kind of unrelated, but I started developing a rash on my face and I mm -hmm. sought help from a dermatologist and he thought it might have been um, perioral dermatitis. Um, so he put me on medications, unfortunately it didn't go away. And I started eliminating different products and I noticed um, that it, it Long story short, it ended up being a lip balm that I had that had all these different ingredients in it. And I, once I eliminated that, my, my rash went away. And so um, it turned out that I, I did have a, a negative reaction, an allergic reaction to that lip balm. And so it's interestingly enough, it is a, it's been a journey to, you know, in terms of being plant-based lifestyle, which not only includes the foods that we ingest, but also the um, the skincare, you know, the materials that we put on our skin because our body absorbs it. And so I, um, had made my, um, own lotions at home before that are made of, um, natural products. But, um, you know, I, I kind of started experimenting a little bit during the pandemic and then, and, um, I said, you know what, this is kind of fun. I decided to brand it, um, and, <laughs> silly it has a hippo uh, as my logo because hippos are herbivores and I just think they're cute <laughs> so it's called happy hippo plant organics it's all vegan all plant-based minimal um, natural ingredients I use cocoa butter shea butter coconut oil just really you know natural ingredients and you won't have to worry about your packaging is so cute I love it <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just fun and I wanted to be responsible because as I um started learning about this plant-based lifestyle I, I learned how the environment um gets ruined by you know these dairy farms and how animals are treated and so I wanted to develop a company not only was vegan but also environmentally friendly so I'm I, you know I try to use biodegradable packaging so these are actually um craft tubes they're biodegradable they're push-up and since i'm a dentist i wanted to incorporate oh. dental products <laughs> so it's a I love that. and it has um all natural plastic free toothpaste and biodegradable dental floss on the way so that's to be um soon soon so awesome i use bamboo toothbrush too <laughs> so my next one i'll buy from you <laughs> <laughs> that's super cool um yeah congratulations on that um everybody check it out happy hippo plant organics yes ma'am yes. okay <laughs> very cool and i love how um a lot of people that i talk to who start the vegan diet for health 
then they start to change the products they use. They start to be more interested in the environment mm -hmm. and how animals are treated. And it's just so eye opening. Yes. Yeah. Um, so very cool. Um, so thank you so much for being on my channel, for sharing your story, for sharing this life changing message. And um, I hope everyone enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching Vegan with Jen. Bye.